Good evening, everybody. My name is David Shaw. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President of the UFC for International and Content. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to you. Our sport would be nothing without the support that we get from the media, and we're very grateful for your travels and your coverage and for attending tonight. Uh, very successful event tonight. We're thrilled. Uh, attendance was 22,603 making it the largest event in uh, Russian MMA history and also the UFC's fifth largest event of all time. Tonight, in terms of bonuses, the fight of the night was Yan and Sun, but uh, due to missing weight, Sun is ineligible, so we're going to go with three performance of the night bonuses, uh, Olenek, uh, Bohovic, and Ankalev. So if there's any questions from the media, I'll take them now. Uh, Dave, certainly. Uh, Hello, John. Very impressive numbers in the attendance. Uh, it was a great crowd out there at night. But give us an overall evaluation. What other metrics do you use? What other, you know, how are you looking at this first event uh, in Russia as, in terms of success? Yeah, I mean, overall, overall, we're thrilled. We've been working for a very long time uh, on the strategy on how you be successful in Russia. As you know, we've had great content relationships here with, with Telesport and Match TV for quite some time. Uh, but for us, th this was an important moment, and I really feel like, you know, this is a celebration uh, of a lot of hard work, uh, but also a lot of opportunity ahead. So, I mean, just to continue the, the answer, uh, there's a lot of metrics that we use. I mean, we're, we were very, very impressed by the fan base. I mean, first fight tonight had 14,000 people in, uh, which, you know, is as big as some full shows that we do. And so I think that's a testament to uh, how deep and how passionate the fan base is here. Um, and so we're very grateful for that. I know the 2019 schedule is still kind of coming together, but based on what happened here tonight, do you have an idea how many events the country can hold? Would you look outside of Moscow? Um, give us an idea what next year holds for Russia. Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, we've made a considerable investment in the marketplace. Um, we've opened up, up, up an office here, which is a pretty big step for us, you know, where our other offices are internationally. Um, it's about next year, it's about the next five years. Um, it's about the next 10 years. I mean, we think that there's a, a massive horizon here uh, given not only how deep the fan base is we spoke about, um, but also, you know, the number of fighters. And you look at how successful Russian and CIS fighters were tonight, um, it just goes to show you how deep the talent pool is. So next year, I mean, we're going to focus on having, you know, one or two events. Uh, we're going to look, you know, as, you know, west is St. Petersburg, east is Vladivostok, maybe Sochi. I mean, there's a number of really good opportunities for us for live events, and there's no doubt that they could be as successful as this one. And last thing for me, Dave, we talked to a lot of the Russian fighters tonight, the winners, and one thing that came up a lot was visa issues that they have competing in the United States. Merbek Tysimov even said he might have to retire if he can't, you know, get the big fights. I know some of that's out of your hands, yeah. but is there anything that the USC can do to help facilitate these these visa issues? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a few, a few notable ones. I mean, you mentioned Tyson, Tyson off. Um, I mean, for us, we've got, you know, a, a pretty comprehensive regulatory team. Uh, works hard taking our athletes, our staff, all over the world. Um, you know, I think there's uh, a certain amount of work that that we can do, and we'll we'll do our best. Um, but you're right. I mean, it is one of those things that's kind of out of our, our control. The best thing that we can do is put these athletes in the best position to shine. And to have uh, a guy like Merbeck tonight compete, you know, in front of 22,000 people, it's a pretty pretty massive opportunity for him, as well as everyone else who was on the card. I mean, this is a special night. Um, so we'll, we'll, you know, there's no shortage of good opportunities for our athletes to, to be in the spotlight. Yes, hello. <clears throat> Uh, just, Hello, how are just, you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, just in regards to a bonus situation, uh, I was just a little bit unclear. So Peter Yan is not getting a bonus on account of Sun's miss? No, 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 sorry, that's incorrect. Peter Yan okay. is getting a bonus, okay. but Sun will not be. He's ineligible. Okay, okay. Um, so in, in lieu of that, we did three uh, performance bonuses that I mentioned. Okay, uh, sorry, I misunderstood. That's okay. Uh, is, there, was, is there any consideration on the kind of a, that Sun took the fight on short notice, or like sort of an extra consideration in that regard? Well, I mean, it's it's pretty black or white. I think you've got to you got to make weight if you want to be eligible to to make a uh, or to earn a bonus. The fight was tremendous. Yeah. I mean, it clearly was. Uh, there are a lot of great fights today, but it was one fight that really stood out. Back and forth action. Um, so you know, next next time. And uh, 
you said, like you said, fantastic results, 22,000. Would you say that they are, in regards to your expectations ahead of time, like on par or ahead of your expectations? No, definitely exceeded our expectations. Uh, we knew there was, there was promise. We knew there was opportunity. We knew that there was a chance. Um, for us to really make a statement, which was, you know, it's important to us. It's the first first event uh, in the marketplace, and you know, you've only got you know one chance to make a good first impression. So for us, uh, it was a, it was a special night. I think what it has made us realize is that, you know, we can keep setting the bar higher and higher, and we're excited to do so. So, given the time difference between Russia and the States, should we ever expect to see a pay-per-view event in Russia? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely on the list of considerations. Um, I know there is the conversation about um, what time that would be. Our pay-per-views are typically aired at 10 p.m. Eastern in the United States. Um, I think for us, we've got a number of other events that we've held uh, late at night or early, early in the morning. Uh, I mean, Manchester as recently as nearly two years ago when, when Bisping fought, we uh, had the stadium event in uh, Stockholm. Uh, I think three or four years ago. So uh, we've done it before, and if the stars align and, and the right pieces come together for uh, a successful event, it's you know we will we'll definitely explore it. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely on our list. It's definitely something we're looking at. Михаил Вестник ММА. Если уже понятно, что российские бойцы могут выступать на самом высоком топовом уровне, то есть небольшие проблемы с их медийностью. Они не очень активны в социальных сетях, в Инстаграме, в других вещах. Будет ли как-то UFC работать с бойцами в этом направлении? Will you, UFC somehow edu educate uh, the fighters, you know, social media wise, you know, help them create content and moderate their content and educate them in that way? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, we've got um, a plan in place with uh, our athletes to help provide them with the tools um, that they need in a variety of different areas relating to, you know, PR, brand, communications, and of course, social media. Uh, those types of services, uh, th that type of help is available. Uh, and, you know, we spend a lot of time with athletes making sure that, you know, if they want to take that element of of their athleticism and their whole brand to the next level that those services do exist but we you know we don't moderate content we just help them succeed mm -hmm. Спасибо вам огромное за то, что приехали в Россию. Мы очень давно ждали все ему сообщество, собственно, как и я. И вопрос такой: был Брюс Баффер, были бойцы, не только российские, но не хватало очень Даны Уайта. Почему президент не приехал? Почему сейчас не сидит здесь с вами и тоже не отвечает на наши вопросы? Thank you so much for coming to Russia. We we waited a long time, but why hasn't Dana come? Why hasn't he come? Yeah, yeah, we've been waiting for him. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, I mean, Dana's a pretty busy guy. He's got a lot going on. Um, you know, this was one of those events where uh, we had a you know very strong team here. The the team mm -hmm. uh, really led by our our UK office. Um, but you know, Dana was very interested in, in what is going on with uh, the plans and is very involved in the plans to make Russia succeed. So, at some point in the future, he will definitely be here. Кроме проблем с визами, у наших бойцов их, в принципе, еще мало задействует, потому что еще Бразилия, Канада, Европа. Это проблема то, что из-за виз вы ждете, или топы, очень трудно нашим бойцам подойти, подобрать соперников, которые будут готовы с ними драться. Okay, apart from the visa uh, issue, you know, uh, there is Brazil, there is Canada, there is Europe, uh, fighters from these markets, so, uh, and there are very few Russian fighters in the UFC. Uh, obviously. Uh, so does that somehow correlate the visa issue and, and the fact that the, there are very few UFC fighters from Russia or is it just very hard to, you know, to find the right contenders for them? Which no. one is that? So I, I actually would, you know, would have to disagree. If you look at the stats, uh, Americans are the most numerous. And then we've got Brazil. I think Brazil, there are around 90 fighters. And then the, the third uh, most populous grouping is Russian and CIS athletes. So, you know, and then follows Canada and, and the UK and a, and a variety of others. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not actually that aware that the visa issue is that big of, a, of an issue. Um, and, you know, I would actually suggest that it's not due to the fact that we've got, um, you know, a very deep roster of, of Russian talent. I mean, you look at, you know, the support that Volkov got tonight. Um, we had the fan experience earlier on today, and the line for Zabit was 2,000 people deep. It was huge. So I think there's a, there's a long list of Russian talent that is going to be successful in the UFC for many years to come. 
Hi, David. Hello. Uh, I'm Igor Lazarin. Nice glad, to, glad, to, glad to see you here. You too. Yeah. Um, if we imagine that you are not a UFC chief, you are a fan. Could you say three words that you like here? In terms of the event? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to ask the question in, in uh, Russian as well? Если представить, вот, что вы не не исполнительную должность занимаете, а простой фанат, в трех словах буквально могли бы описать, что вам тут три три вещи, а, like three things. Can you name three things that you love about UFC? Three things, yeah. Yeah. Три вещи, которые вам нравятся. I mean, I probably say tonight was. You know, a pretty authentic evening. It felt authentic. We're in this building that was built for the Olympics. Um, there were a lot of really, really strong fights. Um, second word I'd probably use was was unpredictable. Uh, there were a few upsets or a few matches that you know you thought might go one way or end a certain way that didn't. And then the last thing is is just exciting. I mean, you know, you heard there were moments when the crowd was stomping their feet, and you could feel the surge of energy, uh, and that's a good way to characterize UFC live event experience. And we'll take one more question, please. Stepan Fyodorov, Sport 24, David. Hello. Перед незадолго до турнира стало известно о том, что М1 заключили соглашение с UFC, и президент М1 Вадим Финкельштейн говорил, что чемпионы М1, которые выступают в UFC, могут после того, как выступят в UFC, вернуться и подраться в М1. Сегодня, например, дрался Алексей Куч... Кунченко. Вот вы можете как-то подтвердить или опровергнуть слова Вадима о том, что люди, которые бойцы, которые подрались в UFC, чемпионы М1 могут подраться опять в М1? So this is Yaroslav Stepanov, and uh, uh, just on the cusp of this championship, it's been known that uh, it's been disclosed that the M1 promotion has signed a contract, an agreement with the UFC, and and the UFC champions can go back to M1 and fight there. Say uh, Alexei Kunchenko uh, was one of them. Can you somehow comment on that? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, our our business plan involved us partnering with. You know, several local entities and local local uh, organizations in order to be successful. I mean, every country has got a different set of new nuances and a different way to to go about business. So for us, you know, success here really needed to involve a few different partners, M1 being one of them. Uh, you know, we may or may not draw on them for fighters at some point down the road. Um, but also, when you look at what it takes to be successful, you know, we need to have a good TV partnership. Uh, we need to have a good brands. Uh, you know, we worked. Well, maybe it makes sense if you want to start there. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, наша стратегия продвижения в России на этом рынке подразумевала, что мы будем uh, ко всем рынкам существует свой индивидуальный подход. Так вот на местном рынке мы uh, знали, что мы будем подписывать соглашения с местными промоушенами и uh, заключать партнерство с сильными местными брендами. Uh, кроме того, нам uh, нужен качественный ТВ контент. Go on, please. Um, and I was saying, you know, you also need successful brands and, and blue chip companies in order to make sure you're connecting with fans all across the country. And for us, you know, working with the likes of, of Reebok and Monster and, and Perry Match and Toyota, just to name a few, um, meant that we can bring our brand to life in Russia and, and connect with fans in, in a variety of different ways. Ну, мы стараемся кооперироваться с теми брендами, у которых уже есть какая-то перекрещивающаяся целевая аудитория, да, фанатская база, чтобы в свою очередь усилить свой бренд. Поэтому для нас партнерство с такими брендами, в том числе сильными локально, как Пари Матч, Тойота, Рибок, это означает, что мы можем усилить бренд UFC на российском рынке. So an event like this um, requires a lot of people working hard, and we're very thankful for the partners that made it success. Um, so I'll end the, uh, the conversation tonight uh, by thanking uh, some of our partners, our DIF and our CIF and Mubadala, uh, the Russian MMA Union, our TV partners, uh, Telesport and Match TV, uh, and of course, uh, Olympijski Stadium. Uh, you know, we've done four other stadium events in Toronto, Melbourne, Stockholm, and Curitiba. Uh, and this ranks up there in, you know, one of the most meaningful events that we've ever done uh, due to it being the first time in Russia and, of course, just the sheer size of tonight. In addition, uh, our promoter Sav, Entertainment, Reebok, Perry Match, Toyota, and Monster.
Uh, and of course, lastly, just like to thank our fans. Uh, it's, it's not often you, you, you uh, are presented with an opportunity to come to a country for the first time. And we were very, very impressed uh, by the, the Russian fans here tonight and everyone else in attendance. So thank you very much. Ну, как вы понимаете, чтобы организовать, организовать такой э, ивент, такое событие, нужно много очень, в том числе, людских инвестиций. Поэтому мы хотим поблагодарить всех наших партнеров, включая Телеспорт, Матч ТВ, фонд Инвестфонд Бумадала, российский фонд прямых инвестиций, Рибок, Тойота. И, конечно же, стадион Олимпийский. Мы много в каких стадионах проводили события. И очень хороший опыт у нас был с, с Олимпийским. И, конечно, не в последнюю очередь поблагодарить фанатов, которые поддержали нас. Спасибо. Спасибо.